touch your um, mic. Shelley Pelletier, 10 Snow Canyon Road in Scarborough. Um, the only question that I have in, in reading the, uh, the agenda and uh, what's on it for item eight is that, is there going to be a time frame that you're going to restrict the lawyers to, to return back uh, with a completed ordinance um, to go through your, I, I would take it, it has to come through this committee first and then uh, once, and then if, it's if, if it's good and there are no changes, then it would go to a public hearing after that. So I was wondering if you put a time limit on that. That was my only question. Oh, cheese. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, let's try this again. So, um, is yours on? Mine is now greenly lit. Oh, good. Okay. So, um, sorry, everyone. I know. <laughs> uh, the question on the table is if there's a set timeline for an attorney to return a completed ordinance to Ordinance Committee. I think that we would hope to have that by the September meeting. So, Ordinance Committee would meet and would discuss that draft from the attorney for September. I think it is likely that they will have questions or things that they would like to see done differently that would come back to them in October. Um, and if everything is good at that point, it would be voted out of this committee and it would head to council where they would have a first reading, a public hearing, and a second reading, which would bring us into the first council meeting of December. So you're looking at till the end of the year. You're looking at the end of the year is what much. Yeah, to be to be safe about it, to be realistic. I mean, if we can get it done sooner, but chances are that it's going to probably take. I that. ask that because um, what, once once the state state once the state passes the law mm -hmm. and all these applications go into the state, we're going to be in limbo until because we would need town approval right. for us to get a license. Yep, thank you. Anyone else? Hello again. Yeah. My name is John Burke, 16 Forecaster Way. Um, just to answer the question about being in limbo, um, the way that it's set up right now is that once applications are being accepted at the state level, it's the processing time is going to be somewhere between 45 and 90 days. So they're looking at issuing, like they're saying, best case scenario, issuing actual licenses in March of next year. So, and that's for adult use. This is, so we're not talking about medical. I just want to, okay. Um, Thank you for that. Yeah. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, yeah no, that, that actually, that's why I was like, um, <laughs> So um, I want to thank the committee. Uh, I want to let the sort of the, the record know that I had prepared an ordinance for the committee's consideration more for a discussion point to move this matter forward. Um, I understand that the committee has a process and it's going to, you know, talk to its uh, attorney and discuss what it's best for the municipality. Um, 
I would love to be able to share my thoughts uh, with the municipal, municipal attorney if possible. Um, however, um, he may or may not want to be willing to speak with me. Um, but I do think it's important that he get input from members of the community, especially the ones that are already here, uh, because they're the ones that have already have established operations and certainly could provide him with some guidance as to maybe things that might work here versus that might work in another community. Um, but um, when I sent you the ordinance, I had not seen item eight. And so I was actually pleasantly surprised to see that many of the issues here that are identified in item eight, I have addressed um, in my ordinance. Uh, my ordinance is sort of a combination of various different ordinances that already are out. Um, I looked at um, the ones that, the, with the exception of Sanford, I have not looked at that one, but I looked at all the others. Uh, and I also looked at the other ones that I had sent to committee to consider as well. Um, I think one of the hardest things here is looking at other communities and seeing what they're doing and see if it works here is something that should be the approach of the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that I think the committee is looking at is whether or not the approach that South Portland has taken will work here. One of the significant differences in South Portland, and I certainly was not involved in that discussion there, so this is sort of after the fact, but I, they did not have the adult use proposed rules. So they weren't able to see the extensive amount of oversight and regulation that the state is going to put upon these adult use businesses. And a lot of these rules appear to be, at least we haven't seen it yet, are going to model some major changes to the medical, specifically medical manufacturing, which we have not seen those rules yet. So I would just encourage the committee to, well, South Portland, Portland, Hollowell, Waterville, all these communities that are starting to develop rules, just be mindful of that, that some of those may not work here, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I sort of prepared a proposal, which I thought was sort of a balancing approach between what I thought the committee was looking to do and what I heard from interested parties here. Um, I, I want to just finally leave it um, with the committee on the odor control and odor mitigation. Uh, it's, it, it's a tough thing. Um, I'm not a grower, but it, I'm, I know that there are cultivators here who could tell you about the challenges that are presented with odor mitigation. I do not believe that the South Portland ordinance anyone could be compliant with. Um, I think it's extremely uh, difficult to mitigate odor, I should say, completely eliminate odor emanating from a property. Uh, but um, I, if you can find that balanced approach, something that I presented some language where it's more of a true mitigation standard, I think it will help the committee work with these growers and ensure that if they're not in compliance, the enforcement officers here can work with them to get them in compliance. And if they don't get compliant, well, that's, you know, like any business, they'll run into serious issues. Mm -hmm. um, I appreciate the committee taking the time and looking at all the information I've sent them. I know it's a lot. Um, but I hope it's just helpful for you guys to move forward because I know that you have other matters, not just this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, okay. Going, going, going then. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that will end the uh, public uh, comment. Um, let's very quickly, I think we can go through items five, six, and seven fairly quickly. Item five is the uh, yard sale ordinance. Uh, Larissa, do you mind? Sure, I'm happy to. So um, I heard from the ordinance committee at our last meeting that you were open to amending the current um, restrictions of only two garage or yard sale permits in any six month period, amending that to six garage or yard sale permits in a 12 month period. Um, and so that's what you have as language. It's very simple strikeouts of the word two and the number two to the word six and the number six mm -hmm. and um, the in the month from six to twelve. Thank you. Don, do you have any uh, comments on yeah, that? Yeah, no further comment other than to say I think this is a fairly straightforward uh, request and hopefully a straightforward review and approval. So it seemed like a reasonable request that didn't change right. uh, materially the intent of the original ordinance. So I, I don't see any problem with that. And, and with that, I recommend make a motion that we vote in favor of it okay as um, proposed. I, I, I would I would agree with that so the motion is made I'll second the motion any other comments let's vote all in favor two right. <laughs> it's gonna go to call number. 
Uh, okay, the food truck. Larissa, yeah. please. So, Todi, town clerk, Todi Justice and I met, um, and the simplest way to handle the licensing, in our opinion, is to modify Chapter 1015, the Town of Scarborough Food, Food Handlers, and Food Establishments Ordinance. Uh, Todi suggested that we can make things simplest by eliminating the words food and food establishments. You'll see that in your red line mm -hmm. copy, and simply making it a food handlers ordinance. And by putting in, um, currently it reads, any person who operates any place where food or drink is prepared, including the language, including mobile units, so that we are allowing for um, food trucks. And I also think I, in your memo on this, I asked you to consider whether or not you would be interested in, did I do that in a memo? Maybe I did not. I would ask that we think about if this could also absorb our current ice cream truck ordinance. We actually do have a separate ordinance for ice cream trucks specifically. Um, and I think that by using the, the language mobile units, it leaves us open to be able to perhaps repeal that and just have it folded into here. So you'll see the, the words and or mobile unit throughout the ordinance. And then Todi also suggested currently the food handlers ordinance um, has a renewal on or before June 30. Mm -hmm. And that's not convenient really for anybody. Mm -hmm. And so she would like to see us kind of start shifting these we need to kind of coordinate with planning to make sure that we're not um, hitting them at a bad time, but January 31st should be a good time for them. Yeah. And she would like us to consider currently if you have an inn that happens to offer massage services and food services, there are three different times, and you have a liquor license, you have four different times in that year that you're coming before council to ask for those sort of things, and it seems like that's an inefficient way to do business. Hmm. Um, and no one really likes to have it during their busiest season either. So by moving that from June 30th yeah. to January 31 um, for these places that really are seasonal a lot of the time, it seems like a, a thoughtfulness that we could do there. So that's the language that's in front of you. If you'll remember, the other piece of this will, is in front of Long Range Planning right now. Yeah. They're the ones discussing where yeah. food trucks should be allowed in the town. This is really just about how are we going to license food trucks when we're ready to mm -hmm. accept them. Right. Any discussion? Uh, I'd like to learn more about the combination of those uh, different establishments that you mentioned a while ago. So if you're the Black Point Inn, yeah. you have food service, yeah. you have liquor, yeah. you have um, an innkeeper's license, yep. you have and you have a massage therapist, I believe, that's right. on site, so you have a massage therapy license, a massage therapy, I don't know the name of the license, but so that's another license that's laying on top of that that uh -huh. are all business licenses, if mm -hmm. you will, um, and they just all have different times of year in which the ordinance yep. that governs them requires their renewal, yep. and that's just inconvenient. But that's yep. not in this here. No. This, is this is just is, directly dealing with right. the food right. handling. I'm explaining about the red line from June 30 to January yeah. 31. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that yeah. uh, proposed change. Yeah. Um, I'm, I am too. Yeah. I think this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. One, one other thing I would mention, though, is that it, in Section 1 it talks about uh, the purpose of this ordinance, the original food, food handlers, and food establishments ordinance, mm -hmm. uh, is to regulate the establishment. So I know we're kind of adding mobile units, but is a mobile unit an establishment? That's I a great question. You know, so I, I don't think know we how could... that's defined, mm -hmm. so I'd just like to clarify that. I'm not recommending a change if it's not necessary. But, right. No, uh, I like that yeah. idea. I think that establishment does imply at least that there's mm -hmm. a bricks and mortar sort of yeah firmament sort of yeah. right going on. Yeah. So I think we can change that to regulate the establishments and or mobile units. There you go, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And where is that? It's the first, uh, it's the last, uh, first sentence of the first uh, uh, section. Section Just one. Oh, I get yeah. it. I, I missed it. Okay. So do you want to offer an amendment? Yeah, I'd, amendment? I'd propose that uh, we amend that to uh, to add the wording uh, including mobile units uh, as is proposed uh, in the rest of the, the ordinance and just make that as a, as a supplemental uh, edit. Yeah, I would second that. Okay. So do we approve do the amendment? Yeah, I recommend it. Well, oh, everyone will vote on that? Yeah, I'd recommend we, we vote on the motion as amended. All in favor? Great. All two. So are you comfortable with this? I want to check in with um, Tom and, and planning to see. I don't know if there is danger in approving the licensing before we have the land use 
piece settled. Because um, at that point we can license a food truck, but right. they're still not allowed to be here, which seems uncomfortable. Well, unless they're catering. If they're here as part of a caterer, they can. Uh, right. The current. Right. So um, I will, before I move this to council, I'll just kind of get some yes. feedback about the direction to take that, if that's okay with you. Yep. Sounds good to and me. And then, um, Councillor Katarina, did you want to go back to item six? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped that. Yes. Uh, I would move that we table uh, the plastic bag ordinance until June. The reason for that is the state's still trying to figure out what they're doing. So I've already talked to members of the Conservation Commission. They're fine with that. So I make a motion to table. Second. All in favor? All right, we'll move that one to June. All right. Last but not least, commercial marijuana. And Larissa, I'll let you. Okay. Um, as directed by the committee last month, um, Councillor Katarina and I met with the assistant city manager out of South Portland, Josh Rennie, who was the um, primary staff person in kind of charge of, of getting their ordinances moving through in the process. And the, I think that I understood the direction was to simply find out what was the process that South Portland used so that we could kind of think about um, how our own process was comparing. First thing that he shared with us is that their municipal t attorney was the one who actually wrote their ordinances, mm -hmm. which made Jean Marie and I both smile rather broadly. That seems like a great choice. Um, and then, so we talked about the public process that they went through as far as holding public hearings to hear about what people had as concerns. Um, and also what, work, working with council to work through some of the things that their uh, attorney was going to need to know was wanted in order to craft those ordinances. So the, the bullet point list that you have in your packet, really I think if, those, if, if this committee is clear on what they would like to have happen in their ordinances related to these bullet points, I think that Phil will be in a really great place to draft us an ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the first question though is, so Jean Marie and I were, were excited the idea of Phil Saucier writing this ordinance, um, I, but I do think that it might, re, it might be good to have some committee consensus on that point. Mm -hmm. Dawn, you're, let's hear your thoughts, because I do yeah. want to discuss this more in June. I'd rather yeah. really focus on June. Yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I agree with uh, Councillor Kat, uh, Chairman, uh, Chairperson Katarina's suggestion that we uh, allow more time for more full discussion of the issues. We don't have a f uh, full committee here, for one. I know. Uh, Katie's and two, here. I... Uh, uh, I want to thank John and others yeah. for the materials that they've submitted uh, that would uh, provide us with, and him with an opportunity to connect with Phil if he wanted to do that. Yeah. So time for more discussion. Uh, there were a couple things in there specifically that I thought were good ideas. Some ideas in terms of pricing uh, for adult use versus medical and some of the things like that, So, which are, which are kind of down into the detail. Uh, there are also, I think, broader questions about some of these. I still have questions about how do you regulate odor for cultivation at all, you know, things that are outdoor and other other things like that. I think it would be appropriate for us to give the, you know, the public uh, an opportunity to you know, have some input on that as well. How we fit that in, I don't know exactly between now and June, but but I, I'd, I'd suggest that we uh, table these questions rather than try to answer them this evening. Okay. Uh, we could give something that would be uh, indicative, but I'd rather have a broader discussion. Okay. Uh, can I ask for some clarity on that point? Yeah. So um, in terms of public process, mm -hmm. I th agree that there may be some challenge in yep. coordinating that prior to your June meeting. Yep. Um, and I think we would need to also know exactly what we're looking to ask the public to speak on. So we've had the two public information sessions that yep. were very lightly attended. I think yep. we only had seven total residents in attendance at those two sessions. Yep. Um, and we did ha have our last fall, our survey with its 258 responses, yep. I think, from residents. So if we are looking to do further public input, I think it would be really great if we could have really clearly defined like what, ex what, are, what do we want to hear from them specifically? And that might help us decide how we get that information from them. Yeah. 
I, I would suggest we these bullet points right here. If we could, if we could set aside June, the only thing we would do in June is the plastic bags, which may or may not, and then specifically marijuana. Then put out these particular points to the public that we have on this memo, saying we are specifically looking for feedback from the community on the following points. Okay. And doing that in that hearing uh, in June. Uh, at the ordinance meeting in June. Okay. Is there information that you as counselors looking at these bullet points that you have in front of you, is there information that you would like me to be building up for you to submit to you prior to June so that you're coming into the June meeting with as much information as you would like on certain topics? Uh, I Obviously, I, I, having not been at the meeting that happened today, Thursday, I really need to be brought more up to date on what's going on with the state. Okay. Um, so so I can forward you the yes, rules that were, yes, that were released yep, that yep. today's... Today's meeting was a public hearing on the rules okay. that were released. So they're still promulgating the rules. At they this have point? not yet adopted those rules. Okay. That's why they're holding the public okay. hearings. Okay. Yeah, I just think it'd be uh, helpful for us to get on stream with that uh, work in progress. The other thought I had is uh, there's a couple steps there. One is for us to, I mean, assuming we uh, are going to be, uh, you know, try to quickly become semi experts on this so that we can help educate. People right. in town and begin to advocate a position on this. I, you know, at some point, it's certainly not between now and June, but perhaps shortly after June or before we get into the fall, some type of opportunity for a workshop for us to talk with the public about it. I, I'm not looking at this so much as uh, info sessions like we had at the very beginning, because we didn't have a point of view as a town yet, or even some, or yeah. as a state. Uh, the state hadn't adopted, begun to adopt rules yet. So I, um, if there's some opportunity for us to have some kind of workshop where we would, uh, as a committee or as a council, uh, try to educate uh, the public on uh, evolving thinking about it. So do there's you, some input. Do you see this as um, a workshop, like town council workshop, or do you see it more as a, like the communications uh, committee, for example, does things I, I'd be open to format and exactly, you know, what... Uh, what uh, process rule we would use on that, what procedural rule mm. we would use. I'm pretty open in terms of whether it would come from this committee or be combined with communications or be a town council. But I, I think there's another, there's some sort of other step where we have to have some back and forth discussion. Um, so, and there are people who uh, can try to define for folks what positions are evolving and where it looks like we're going to be coming out. Because at some point, People are going to have to review, read the right. ordinances in detail, and and even now I have a hard time. I've read the ordinances for, that the state right. has drafted, and uh, all the ones that John sent as well. And I, if I had to stand up and give, you know, <laughs> ten minutes on it, I'd have a hard time yeah, saying too. where I think we are as a right. even as a committee. Uh, forget about uh, talking about the town or the council. So, so. would that um, I. Are you interested in having that workshop set up prior to us sending a package of information to Phil be for him to craft the ordinance? Is it to inform the, the crafting of the ordinance? Or would you like to have that workshop after Phil has crafted an ordinance to get feedback from the community about the proposal? Yeah, I, I think that uh, uh, it's got to happen uh, in the least, uh, you know, after Phil drafts something. But I think that sure. there's got to be some opportunity for input even between now and then. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to have an or this ordinance right. meeting in June. Right, right, right. So if we give enough somewhere and, around and there. keep it strictly yeah. the marijuana, and then we've, t as I said, the plastic yeah. bags we've tabled, but that yeah. may or may not. But if we but just keep it to that. Around what we're going to cover yeah. at the, the June meeting and then go from there to having Phil draft things. But I'd still like a chance for us to somehow educate before it just goes to the council for approval. Oh, there's Absolutely. plenty of time. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. On the back end. That. So I'm wondering, um, agreed wholeheartedly, I think yeah. that that makes great sense for the fall. I'm wondering, would you want to explore, and you guys would have to look at your own schedules to see if this was an option, you know how um, you will have a council meeting, but it's preceded by a, a council workshop. Yeah. Would you be interested at the June meeting in having a ordinance committee community workshop Okay, so you, last week you had a workshop with Piper Shores. Piper Shores is at the table with you, freely speaking, round and round. I think we could frame something that was a community um, workshop 
in the kind of a similar manner, it would be interesting to see, it would depend a little bit on attendance, um, but have that kind of preceding the meeting so that the, because if we, if we have. So the counselors are there? So, so US, co US committees, involved, yeah. they could be if they wanted to, but like US committee members would be part of that, that, that workshop form. What am I, I don't think, I think concern is too strong of a word here, but if we have the community feedback within the confines of your June meeting. Yeah, that's the 20th, right, June 20th. Right, there isn't really a, a framework for there to be dialogue yeah. within that. Yeah. So if we were to proceed that with an, from three o'clock to four o'clock, let's say. Um, oh, I see what you're saying, before the actual meeting. Before the actual actually. meeting. Yeah. So we would enter into a, a kind of community session yep. that would then conclude at four for you to enter into your meeting yep. and then address these bullet points as elected officials yep. based with that work for you? My concern with that is it, that's work time for a lot of people. You know, they're in... Okay. They're yeah, in, yeah, it is know? cutting into the work day. Okay. Uh, the regularly scheduled meeting. Would you like to have a special yeah. workshop? Do you want me to look at the calendar and see if there is an evening available? Yeah, I, so I want to, so I don't I'm know. I'm thinking this can wait until September. Yeah, I'd rather they have yeah. Phil's draft yeah. so it's more concrete for people to. And we do the rest of the work in committee before then. Okay, so June, you as counselors will focus on working through yes. what your recommendations are these bullet points. Yes. Three of us. We'll send it to Phil yes. over the Summer Hill Craft yeah. and Ordinance, yes. and then in September we'll be able to unveil that to the public and yeah. have these workshop sessions with yeah. the public on that ordinance specifically. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So for your June meeting, is there? I, I'll send certainly send the the state's um, rules for yes. you to review. Yeah, please. Are there other specific bullet points here that you would like further information on, or um, in order to? Be ready to discuss them as a committee? I don't have anything in particular, having been involved, you know, with long range planning and whatever. Okay. None that I can think of. But I think time. the important okay. thing is to make sure we're getting feedback from the growing community, um, medical providers, concerned citizens, you know, whatever. Uh, as much as we can to give to Phil so that he can then take the time to draft ahead of time and then go from there. Uh -huh. Okay. So that, because I, I want this to come out right. And, and as Mr. Burke pointed out, you know, every community is different. And, uh, you know, for most people don't understand or realize that when this medical, when the, excuse me, when the legalization, um, referendum came out Scarborough was against it so you know we're we're sort of dealing with that with the fine line there but we want we I also don't want to put the kibosh on on uh, the business as an industry but I want to do it right in first okay. time so that it doesn't come back and bite people because these people put a lot of uh, investment into their businesses um, and I want to make sure that you know, the community isn't, we don't get any um, whiplash okay. at all from the community on this. So okay. that's where I'm coming from. Great. So, uh, yep. The only thing I was thinking about about this list, I, I agree with what uh, uh, my fellow counselor said. Uh, uh, there, I recall there was a lot of discussion around canopies, how to define them, and that sort of thing. And I, I saw that detail in the, in the state uh, rules. So there's, you know, better definition on that in the various tiers in terms of sizes mm -hmm. so but there's a there's a lot of detail uh and what is that it's, uh it's 70 pages right 74 pages or something like yeah. that the state's rules so it's pretty detailed uh and it's going to take time for us to absorb that but i i think with the time frame that people outlined yeah. uh you know for the town and also for the state uh of being end of the year q1 or something like that uh i think that'll give us adequate time to yeah Okay. To smoke out these other questions. So. Okay. Do you want me to invite Phil to be with us yes. at the June yes. meeting? Please. Yeah. Okay. Because I want him to hear firsthand mm -hmm. from people, too. Great. All right. So let, um, I will move. <laughs> Great. That we move. The uh, further uh, work on the marijuana ordinance to the June and have that be the primary uh, topic of the June meeting. And that meeting is, do I have their date right? June 19th, Tracy? Sounds right. 
at 4 p.m.? Oh, I've got the wrong, I was probably looking at the wrong thing. Okay, 20th, whatever day it is, at 4 p.m. Uh, 4 p.m., yes. This was moved because of some other issues that we... So there's no workshop before it, this will be just be a traditional ordinance. It'll be the traditional ordinance, but the focus of it will be marijuana. <laughs> I just want it to be marijuana, and we may end up with plastic bags in there. But uh, I'm still waiting on the state on that, and that's not a huge issue. This we do need to, to, to move because people are wa have been waiting and waiting yeah. and waiting and waiting and, and waiting. Are trying to do more to get more of the public to that? that yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Put stuff out so on. Can, you know, if we have that knowledge that that's the point right. of the meeting, I mean, obviously a lot of people that we deal and, with live in this town, yeah. a lot of people we know live in this town, yeah. so we know that you know, yeah. a lot of people that I talk to today do you want to come up here so people can hear you on at, who may be watching at home? Yeah, so... Um, and you are? Uh, Michael Shannon. Uh, cultivate with my father down on Snow Canning okay, Road. Thank you. Um, and, you know, we've been trying to open up a storefront or, you know, be in communication. I know you guys have a ton to do on that, especially with the whole wreck and all that. But, you know, just trying to get everything, you know, figured out from the town clearly is your right. biggest point of, you know, emphasis. You don't want to ruffle the wrong feathers. You don't want to make the town mad. I guess, you know, ultimately you guys are more concerned about the, you know, community's backlash, sort of like I said when we had kind of right. an off-to-the-side discussion last time that I think if a lot of people had this big of an issue with it, you would probably already know. Um, I don't know. Maybe John has a good idea of what happened in Portland after they legalized it. I don't know if people stormed the town hall or anything mm -hmm. like that, but, you know, Whereas we're in the community, I had a couple other people that I know John recommended trying to, you know, get other growers from our building down, and a couple of them were just like, I'm not going to bother wasting my time. Yeah. You know who I'd be interested in seeing? And if you folks have any just general contact town. with people who aren't real happy with you guys. And, well, that's the weird thing. I, I haven't met I many of them. I want to try to address and find out what their issues are. Like when I first started, it was very... Weird. I don't know what other way to use yeah, it. Oh, Weird. Yeah. I felt almost uncomfortable. Like, really? Like, you know, you go places and you think that you're going to get looked at wrong. You know, right. you go anywhere after going to work. Any other growers in this room know you go anywhere after being in your facility, after being at work. The person next to you, if they have any idea what, you know. Oh, oh Most people me. say, hey, you smell <laughs> nice. Or, I mean, I, I have not had a single person yeah. speak negatively, which, yeah. again, I didn't yeah. know what to expect with it. But... Well, this you know, if you right know now, that that is the purpose of the next <laughs> meeting, I think that, you know, the people that are in this town, you know, should do a good job to yeah. encourage as many people to go. Yeah. I know that's what I would be doing and what sure. I will be doing. Um, and that's not just the growers, but obviously, like right. I said, the community. Right. I'm sure that people that are customers of ours and patients of ours probably know people that are for and against it. Yeah, and I think just the growing number of people against it, see, it I'm almost daily or weekly just having like, wow, this person, that person, you know, other people of your family. I'm originally from Massachusetts. You know, when every time I go back, people know, you know, what I'm doing up here and they tell me about, oh, well, I'm actually using these products now for yeah. this or that. It's just the amount that is growing. Yeah. I just think that you, if let's just, I know it never happened, but let's just, you know, say you slam that gavel down right and say, and you guys do whatever you want, right? I'm you'd not have a huge uproar. From the, <laughs> no, I know that would never happen. But you'd have a huge uproar from the community, possibly. Yeah. But I think after a few months, everyone sees, oh, you know, people have these crazy thoughts of what's going to happen by yeah. letting a store in. Everyone looks at it as the, you know, the gateway drug. But let's be honest, everyone yeah. in this room has probably tried alcohol first. Like, yeah. I don't think you're going to run into, you know, having a slum on your, you know, people worry about the people that it brings into mm -hmm. their neighborhood. You look at right. people in this room, you know, right. like I don't see any issue with that. And some of the other towns that have these, I think, have right. led the way for us. So. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Yeah, very quickly. Very yeah, quickly. you would. Yeah. I'd just like to add to that comment about the unintended consequences. I really do think it's really important this committee takes a look at what's going on in California, what's mm -hmm. going on in Canada. 
what's happened is there's been a lot of dry communities. Mm -hmm. And when demand goes up, where does the demand go? Because there's not enough product to be grown, because there's not enough facilities, there's only a limited amount of real estate to actually have these cultivation facilities. And we're really more talking about adult use at this point. But uh, one of the things I want the community to be cautious of is being overly restrictive on any of these mm -hmm. activities. Because whether we want to have a community that opts in or not, we already have two neighbors that already have. Mm -hmm. And the unintended consequence is that, there, that if Scarborough and Westbrook and Buxton and all these other communities don't do it, there's going to be these big dry zones and what's going to fill that vacuum? The illicit marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I, I certainly understand there's some very passionate people who do not want this. Um, and while I may disagree with their reasoning for it, um, that's their right. But the goal here is to try to create a safe um, uh, means, a way of being able to purchase this plant, um, consume it, mm -hmm. um, and have it properly regulated. And uh, California is a nightmare. And it's, they're, now they're trying to go back and fix the mistakes they've made. And it's so far, they're so far in advance of having such a huge Legal marketplace, illegal marketplace, it's going to be a while till they fix it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that Maine doesn't go in that direction and that while I obviously would like, you know, a little bit more things to move faster, I can understand the committee taking a slow approach to see, all right, let's get the finalized adult rules first, then get to the next mm -hmm. point. So I really do appreciate you guys taking the time. I know this is, mm -hmm. and you're right, these rules are dense, very <laughs> dense and very complicated, yeah. Yeah. and that's why people like me exist. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. All right, uh, with that, um, we will move this then to June. Uh, yeah. Is there anything new that we need to discuss? All right, can I have a motion for adjournment? I would make a motion to adjourn. Uh, second that, all in favor? And we're done. Thank you. Thanks very much. <laughs>